We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to continue painting this car in the Betrayer Mini, and we're going to paint all the gold trim on the armor. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave them down below in the comments. Now we're going to do just a traditional light gold scheme. We're going to start with our base color as Balthazar Gold. We're going to mix it with a little bit of Lamian Medium. And this is just going to be our base color on all of the armor trim. Now Balthazar Gold is a little bit lighter than what I would normally use for a base coat in a gold metallic, but that's simply because I want the gold to be lighter, so I'm going to start with a lighter color. However, because of that lightness, it's going to take us a few layers to really build up a nice opacity to our paint. And that's okay, we just wanna go about it slowly. We wanna add multiple layers after the previous ones dried until we build up the color. We don't wanna put it on too thick. We don't wanna gloop anywhere, especially with these metallic paints. If you apply them too thickly, they really start to look plasticky and that's not what we're going for. Karn, like almost any other Chaos Space Marine, has a lot of armor trim areas. So we're just going to go through and make sure that we catch them all. There's also a corn symbol on the bottom of his feet that I'm going to paint in this color. And just any other accent areas that I feel like I want to be a nice bright gold. After the Balthazar gold, we're going to highlight with Gehenna's gold. Now this color is going over quite a bit of the metallic trim. We're leaving that dark Balthazar gold in just the areas that we want to have be our darkest shadow. And this is going basically everywhere else. And we really want to start concentrating with this layer and all of our next layers in bringing some light to any edge and to anywhere that would be catching the sun. Now this just depends on your paint pot, but my particular pot of Gehenna's gold paint has a really interesting separation issue and the medium that is used actually has a lot of really pretty reds to it which I noticed as I was playing with the paint. However one quick tip to kind of solve that is first off make sure that you really shake your paints before you use them but also you can store them upside down and that kind of helps the pigment and the medium blend together a little bit better versus just settling down to one area. And I don't necessarily store them upside down permanently, but if I know I'm going to be using a particular paint, I'll just grab it and about 10 minutes before I'm planning on using it, I'll shake it up and then I will turn it upside down and just let it sit there for a little while so I get a better distribution of pigment to medium. I find that these gold metals blend together pretty well. The colors kind of meld into each other. But as always, if there is ever a section that I feel like the two colors are too different from each other, I can go back with a little bit of my previous paint, make a mixture of the two, and kind of use that to help me blend the transition between them. And one thing I need to keep in mind is that there is a lot of this trim right around the eye area. And I can use that to my advantage by making sure that that area is really bright, which kind of draws the eye towards the face and makes it a focal point. So as I highlight, regardless of whether or not that particular area of the model would be in light, I wanna make sure that I keep it really bright so that the eye is drawn right there. The next color I wanna use is going to be Liberator Gold. I like this color a lot. I find it's a really interesting gold color. It's a little bit less saturated. It's got less yellow in it. It's a little bit more of a silver gold. However, I really like how opaque the paint is. And I really like using this as a intermediate step to my final highlight because of that little bit of silveriness. I like to highlight my golds with a final step of Runefang Steel, which you'll see later. And having this be a step right before it really helps the still blend into the rest of the gold. But since this Liberator Gold color is so opaque and so silvery, I want to make sure that I'm applying it just to the very high points of the armor. I'm not applying this too thick. I don't want to change the color of the armor. I'm just kind of creating a base layer for my final highlight on the edges. 
Before I do my final highlight, I'm going to blend together a couple shades. My main one is going to be Seraphim Sepia. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of Druji Violet. I'm not mixing those two shades together right now. I'm going to begin by applying Seraphim Sepia over a large section of the armor. I want to make sure that I leave some areas of really brightness that's not covered by the shade. But this is going to help blend the colors together. It's going to help transition from armor trim to metal plate. And it's going to give a little bit more of a differentiation in my shadowed areas. I'm using Seraphim Sepia because this is going to sink into the cracks. It's going to give me a little bit of that shadow, but it's not really a dark color and it's going to continue to let me have a really bright gold. And then while the Seraphim Sepia is drying, but before it dries completely, I want to just dot a little bit of the Druchi Violet color and my very darkest shadows. I just want to give those areas a slightly different tint. It's going to be very subtle. You're not going to notice it a lot. It is going to give just a little hint of a different color to those dark shadowed areas, which is going to make things look a little bit more interesting in those areas. All right, and like I said, our final highlight is going to be with the color Rune Fang Steel. I'm applying this as a very small line highlight just on the areas where I already applied Liberator Gold, just giving a final shine to those areas. I'm not necessarily trying to paint and change the color. I'm just adding a very bright shine. And even just adding a shine to a few spots is going to make everywhere around it seem brighter as well. All right, and after that final Room Fang Steel highlight, the bright armor trim on this Karn model is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I go through all of the steps of painting the black accents and the silver areas on this Karn Mini in the Mini Wargaming Vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a Vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link, sign up for a seven day free trial, and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial, and happy wargaming!